Sledge Hammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Uh, today, I am joined by my really good friend, Michael Cologne. Michael, how are you doing today, man? Dude, I'm really good. How are you doing? I'm doing so well. Um, for those of you that don't know, Michael is huge in the horror scene, um, director of many shorts, knower of everybody, and one of the <laughs> most genuine, nice, down-to-earth guys I have ever had the privilege of meeting. Um, so I know things are kind of crazy right now with quarantine, but I know it's a little bit, you know, in the indie festival, you know, especially right now with where we do some stuff online. I know you got some stuff submitted in festivals right now. Is there anything you can talk to us about or? Well, I mean, there are a few festivals coming up. Um, I have a few films coming up in an online festival next month, which is called the Fantastic Horror Film Festival. It usually takes place in San Diego, but now in the age of COVID, I believe they're showing the movies online. I don't have all the information for the online screenings just yet because uh, we're still in September. Sure. But I think that information should be available probably in the next couple of days. So, and then as, as more and screenings come you, up, I usually put them on my website. Yeah, I'll say, I'll make sure you guys are checking out the description here. This won't air until a little bit later, but yeah. as soon as you have anything like that, please let me know. I'll be happy to put it up on Instagram and Twitter. I love your stuff. Oh, um, you're great, man. This is something... Uh, before we get too far into this, today is uh, September 29th. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yep. Today's the 29th. Um, I lost my grandfather today, so we weren't going to do this, but I wanted to keep everything kosher and good. Um, so I just want to dedicate this episode to Frank Austin. Uh, Grandpa, I love you. We are all going to miss you. And, you know, your strength. I, I knew you for 15 years. This was my wife's grandpa, but your strength was incredible. And you were a great man, and we're going to miss you very much. Um, yeah. Thank God bless. You know that. God bless. <clears throat> it's been a pretty crazy day, so I appreciate you uh, still doing this with me, kind of keep my mind off things. My pleasure, um, man. I know when you no, told me, I was like, oh, man, I feel, I feel kind of guilty doing this. So, But I understand the distraction. Favor. Yeah, it, it really means a lot. Like I said, you're one of those guys that I feel so comfortable doing this and letting the emotions out because – the friendship level that we have is beyond yeah. horror movies and everything. It's a genuine friendship. So oh, I appreciate it. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any of my props with me, but <laughs> today. That's okay. Be- we don't need, we don't need props. We're good. <laughs> uh, but your first horror movie is something I think is special to all of us in the horror genre. Something that we are all so much in love with. It means so much to all of us. So got to get it out there, man. Your first horror movie was. Gremlins. Well, you know, <laughs> I have to tell you, so when you asked me, you're like, what's your first horror movie you saw? I was going through my mind, and I, one of the first ones I could just remember was Gremlins, and I remember seeing it in the theater, so I had to be fairly young, mm-hmm. but I, I'm trying to remember why we saw it in the theater, and I think maybe, I mean, a lot of people consider it maybe a Christmas movie, because it takes place during Christmas, so I, you know, and I'm wondering if, like, maybe that's why we saw it, maybe my family didn't think it was a horror, I mean, I guess it's not specifically a horror but you know i mean it did affect me because you have this cute little mogwai gizmo you know and then when he gets wet and those little things pop off the the gremlins so i guess in a way it's probably a creature feature i don't know it's like one of those things that kind of like you know crosses a lot of genres much like me for those of you that don't know i also have the link down here in the description when i was lucky enough to be on mimosas with michael yes and something i did on mimosas with michael was I jumped the gun a lot and I talked about things that he was already going to ask me. And my friend Michael here just did the same thing because I was going to ask him if he considered Gremlins to be a Christmas movie or not. <laughs> well, I, I, in, my, in my defense, I do, I have watched your show, so I do know some of the questions you're going to ask. But I right. do, but I have had this conversation with people before where a lot of people are like, oh, like, is it a Christmas movie? But I guess it's it's a Christmas movie like people think of Die Hard as a Christmas movie. Die Hard. Right. Right. Just because it takes place at Christmas time does not make it a Christmas movie. Yeah, and I never, I've never considered it a Christmas movie. In fact, I think in, I think subconsciously I always forget it takes place during Christmas because I consider it more of like a little like the little it's like a creature feature in a sense. In, in a way. That's my next question is because we're talking about, you know, don't get it wet, don't feed it after midnight don't show it the sunlight, you know, those are the rules everybody knows about Magua, you know, but yeah. let me ask you, when it comes to that movie, what scene do you think stuck with you the most from that film? There's, there's a couple, but I'm going to tell you, um, to this day, 
literally to this day, if I ever put anything in the microwave, I always think of the scene when she's in the kitchen and she hits, she hits the gremlins attack starts into the microwave and turns it on and it explodes. Yeah. To this day, it's like, I can't look at a microwave without that. And then I think one of the scenes that I, I kind of tickled me was um, the old lady, I can't remember her name, but she was, she used to, she was Flo in, in Mel's Diner. And I used to watch that show a lot when I was a kid. You know, she's like, Mel, kiss my grits. And so she was in that movie. And I think the scene when, when they hit the chair and she goes up the, 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 her staircase and flies out the window. Yeah. Like, they're not scenes that scare me, but they're definitely scenes that, like, will pop up in my head. I'm like, oh, I remember that scene. It was so funny. With horror movies, there's also, there is the scare effect of them. But there's a lot of horror movies that have scenes that are not scary at all that have stuck with me my whole life. Yeah. You know? Oh, without a doubt. Oh, yeah. And I think that's what's so wonderful about horror movies. It doesn't have to be a horrific scene for it to stick with you. No, I think it's just something about if a certain scene might might speak to you because maybe it was something you you related to as a kid or something you experienced at the same time maybe like i don't know maybe like if if you're watching a horror movie and it takes place or the whole story is like maybe a kid going through a, a divorce like their parents are going through the divorce so like that's not necessarily hor- hor- horrific in that sense but it's something you can relate to sure right so i would think scenes like or maybe like the parents are going through divorce and like the kids so i think Stuff like that is really, you know, but it's the same thing. When it it hits closer to real life. Yeah. But you and I talked about that on my show and it's really, it's about that. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, there's just certain things that, that happen that you relate to. You you even said sometimes horror movies affect you more than like other movies because of that. Yeah. I think horror movies have a tendency of pulling on your heartstrings like that. Um, One example I like to bring up uh, devil from 2013, the M night Shyamalan film. Yeah. Um, that movie has that movie made me cry harder than any you know drama film. I never, I have to see that one. I I haven't watched a lot of his later stuff just because like after a while I was like not becoming his biggest fan. So I but it, do I think I need to check that one out? Yes, um, okay. it's actually in, it's in my top ten favorite uh, horror suspense movies. The twist is I mean they have a twist at the end, but it's kind of predictable. But the twist it the big twist for me. Once you watch it, we'll talk about it because I don't want to spoil it for you, man. I think it's a fantastic movie. So yeah, I do want to watch a- it. Okay. Um, another thing I want to talk to you about, we you know we know your first horror movie is Gremlins. Um, you were also in a book called My Favorite Horror Movie, which also links down here so you guys can check this out. Yeah, I, and I believe you, you're going to interview Christian you soon. Tell me. I don't know what the answer to this is, and I've been waiting for this for a couple, you know, since we've been talking. Yeah. What is your favorite horror movie? Oh, it's Nightmare on Elm Street. But here's, you know why? Because it came out when I was about nine years old. And uh-huh. my cousin, my cousin, who I know you're going to interview as well, my cousin made me watch a lot of the Friday the 13th and it really scared me. And, um, and I'd already got my love of horror because like between him and then watching Gremlins and my dad liked horror. But there was something about Nightmare on Elm Street. And this is what I mentioned in the, um, in the book. Nightmare on Elm Street is like the movie when I knew that I loved like horror movies. Like Freddy didn't scare me. Like to the extent that maybe like Michael Myers did or, or, or um, um, Jason Voorhees, only in the sense that like he, I mean, there, he did kill people and the movies they did frighten me. But like Freddie was, he also had a lot of one-liners. He was sort of like, uh, what's the not likable but charismatic, I think, for a serial killer. And yeah. he, I had this big poster on my wall. I mean, it must have been like you could fill this whole thing or, of just like Freddie's face and his. Like he was such a like I think you even said it too. Like he was like on Nickelodeon, like presenting an award kind of thing. Like yeah. somehow he, his particular character was able to tra- transcend that. And I think because of that, I was like, it's like the thing that made me realize I want to be a filmmaker. You know, especially a horror mm-hmm. filmmaker. And then I also tied it into um, Nightmare on Elm Street too, because I didn't realize it at the time. But um, growing up as a as a little gay kid something about that movie i was like why do i like this one so much and and like mark Patton's character was really cute so i it was it was one of those things that made me shape up like like, i might be gay (laughs) i think i think that's one of those early moments in my life when i thought that it's really funny because i got a really good friend um he ranked the halloween just like i did the halloween freddy's jason's from 31 to 1 uh their favorites yeah and on 
two, he said the same thing I did. Like that's considered the gay one. And it's like, yeah, men, they hate that because it's the gay one. And it's like, dude, there are titties in every single horror movie. Yeah. If you can't one movie with a homosexual vibe and there's nothing outlandishly gay in the movie. No. And then I don't think they even set out to do it. It just no. happened. Right. But if you can't watch one movie because there's a gay vibe to it, I don't think the problem's the movie. I think the problem is you. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And I didn't like, even... You can call that one the gay one, but I still think Nightmare 2 is the fucking darkest one. Like, Freddy was the darkest and scariest he's ever been in Nightmare 2. It has so, one yeah. of my favorite scenes, the poolside scene where he gets, like, in the group of people. Yeah, like, seeing Freddy just go on a rampage. So fucking awesome. And that's when he was like, you're all my children now, right? Yes. I love yes. But I think this scene when he bursts out of, like, Mark, like Mark's skin... I was just like, oh, I mean, it was so terrifying. Yeah. And that's crazy. Yeah. So, but I just love the first one. I, I, um, I was, like I said, I was lucky enough to meet, to meet, um, Heather Langenkamp and then Amber, uh, we, so I think is great. And then, like I said, last year, we saw this on my show, but last year I had, um, drinks with Robert England. That just like, was one of those things that just happened. And I'm so blessed because, when it came time to do the book, they're like, "Oh, like give us a picture to relate to your to your um, to your uh, essay, like you holding a prop or something." And I was like, "Oh, I can do better than that. I actually have a picture of me with Robert England." <laughs> Man, that's that's a dream. Like, uh, yeah, I was lucky enough. You guys see that? I just did an interview <clears throat> with Victor Miller, oh, I love and Victor. that's the same to me. Which I owe someone a big thank you <laughs> for helping to hook that up. Victor's but, uh, one of the nicest people I've ever met. So I'm glad. I'm glad that worked out, man. Oh, me too. And we, we talked about you in the episode on how sweet of a guy you are. And that was the same thing for me, you know, because, uh, you know, Nightmare, Friday the 13th, Halloween, to me, those are the big three. And, you know, yeah. I've been able to talk to people that have been involved in all those films. And, you know, the 13 year old in me, his head explodes every time I get to talk to you guys. And, um, you know, like even you, yes, we are friends, but I respect the work you do. Oh, I have well, a big admiration for it because you're out there killing it all the time. And I know things are crazy right now with COVID. So, you know, supporting the indie film thing is something I think is very important. And I'm so appreciative to you, not just for coming on the show, but for all the things you've done for me behind the scenes that uh, these people don't know about the conversations that we get to have. Yeah. And, you know, helping me with personal stuff in my life that I'm going through right now. And of course, man, you, know, you being a friend to me means a lot. So thank you again for doing this too. Um, one question I have for you, we're back to Gremlins. <clears throat> um, Gremlins 1 or Gremlins 2? You got to choose one. Which one are you two of them? Oh, Gremlins 1. I've, I've seen that one more times than I've ever seen Gremlins 2. I think I've only seen Gremlins 2 maybe a couple of times. Mm -hmm. I'm all about the original. I, every time. I don't dislike Gremlins 2, but I think Gremlins 2 is more kid-friendly than Gremlins 1. Gremlins 2 definitely took that you know, kitty approach, like having Hulk Hogan come in in the middle of the movie yeah. and, you know, the things like that. So, Well, they probably did it because they, they weren't expecting so many kids to probably, I mean, Gizmo in a lot of ways, like a little, is, is not scary at all. He's so cute and adorable. And I even had a little Gizmo doll when I was, a, like the one you showed me, I had the exact same doll as a kid. So, um, but what is it? You know, waiting. I, was, I was supposed to have that prop with me. I know. Then you Dance is kind of, you know, it happens, but. Oh, I mean, this is more organic in that way. Yep. But I did, I did, I don't, I, this time I haven't told you, and I don't think you know this, but I actually worked one time with Joe Dante. Oh, um, really? I did a movie one day. I was filling in on a project. They did a reshoot of, or an additional photography day. And I did a, I did a day and it was, the two actors were actually horror directors in the scene. And it was Joe Dante and John Landis. And it was one of those things. I know it's it's one of those things. And that day, um, I did get to talk to jo to Joe Dante briefly. And I have, but the thing is, I've run into him many times since in horror conventions. And so since I worked with him, I was able to connect to him. And just being able to sure. talk to him about Gremlins is was always like a fun thing. Yeah, I'm lucky enough to like run into people eventually now in in my field of work. And what's great about working with them is you're already there all day long, so you kind of just be like, hey gremlins you know <laughs> like it's like it's one of those things that pop up so i do love having that experience but i joe dante is like very approachable he's one of the i mean he really is a nice guy yeah. so let me ask this we're talking about gremlins i don't know if you know or not but howie mandel is not coming back for the animated series on netflix um because he did the voice of gizmo yeah i think i remember that um but are you going to be watching the animated series on netflix 
I mean, yeah, I would love to. That's yeah, do you know when it comes out? I haven't heard when it comes out. I have not. I heard it was in production, but I haven't heard any release date. All I, the only reason I know is because there was a big headline talking about Howie Mandel not coming back, which is a bummer. But you know, it's animated, so they can do so much with that anyway. Yeah, and and I'm sure nowadays, I mean, they can find someone who could probably get close enough. Right. You know, like Bill. I mean, enough people can do it. I do. My favorite line for the movie though was Gizmo. Ka-ka! Like I love that line. <laughs> And I have a question. This is something that my friends and I always talked about, but it's always after midnight. Like, when, how late can you – because, like, 6 o'clock in the morning is technically after midnight. So, like, when can you feed a gremlin? There's exactly. never been answered. Right. And what about time zone shifts? I know. I, if I ever got – you know, if we ever get Joe Dante on the show, you got to ask him that because when can you feed a gremlin? <laughs> That's the right, damn you, question. I mean, it's all, I mean, it's always 5 o'clock somewhere. It's always after midnight somewhere. Exactly. And it's like twelve oh one. Like, is it like you can't feed them until like six in the morning? Like, do they right. can? Can he only? Yeah, is it from noon to midnight? Yeah. You know, is he on like a twelve hour not eating shift? Like he's uh, fasting? Yeah, we gotta find the side. If anybody knows the answer to that, please let it comment in the show below because I want to know. <laughs> now now <laughs> we're asking the hard hitting questions here. I mean, I've always been like, how you know, I've always wanted to know because if I were to get a gremlin, could he tell <laughs> me? I don't think he would be able to tell me like I can't eat this time. <laughs> Right, yeah. Do you come with an instruction manual on when your fasting times are? Yeah, exactly, because he didn't come with it. He just came in a really cool box, but he didn't come with instructions. Right. <laughs> so, so I, you, as you know, we end these with goal counts. Uh, zero being the worst, five being the best. What are you ranking Gremlins, my friend? Zero to five? Yep. I mean, I'm going to say five, just because I think it's such a fun movie, even to this day. You know, um, I mean, Corey, I mean, you got people like Corey Feldman was in it. Um, Gizmo was so damn adorable. I mean, it's one of those movies that even if it's on, you're still going to watch it, you know. Always. And you, you know, all the lines. So, I mean, I don't, it's one of those movies that I, I never want to see it to, to be remade. We talked about this before. Yep. But if it ever did get remade, I would love to direct it. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to lie. But see, I, I already told you. Me. I'm going to direct the Halloween 3 season of The Witch sequel or remake. So I think you should. And you're going to do the Gremlins one, and we're going to have to be involved in each other's work. Yeah. Well, definitely make sure you talk to, to, to um, Mr. Meat Hook about that. We want to remake it. I think you'd be excited to be involved. Oh, you know I'm going to. But, like, the thing with me is I would, I would really stick so close to the original just because I don't like, I don't like changing something that's already good. But if they wanted sure. to hit it to a new audience, I would just upgrade it, maybe, like, you know – put it in more of maybe a metropolis area maybe find out more of like where he came from perhaps that's one nothing the story never really explains is like where this gremlin comes from right and maybe we don't know we talked about that with trick or treat but i'm the opposite with gremlins i'd like to see a backstory on you know the mogwai you know gizmo and see where he came from and how that started yeah you know but see like we talked about with trick or treat i think that trick or treat's perfect i don't want a sam backstory because i don't want to be disappointed in the backstory but with you know, Gizmo, I don't think it's possible to be disappointed in that type of backstory because it's a creature, you know. So I think yeah, and you don't, have to go, you don't have to go into such depth. It could just be like an opening scene of like maybe, you know, I think he was from China. It could be – maybe he comes over on a boat. Like who knows? It could just be something right. simple. Well, look right? at arachnophobia. You know, arachnophobia had the perfect set. You know, it started off in the jungle. The spider bit him, got into the coffin, came back to the States, and that's yeah. how the spider died. We don't need any more than that. Yeah, you don't need any more than so, that. Right. Um, well, guys, don't go anywhere, Michael. I still got to talk to you a little bit. Everybody else, thank you again for watching. This is my good friend, Michael. Uh, Michael Colomb. I got all his information down here. Make sure you're checking out his podcast, Mimosas with Michael. He has a bunch of great guests. He's going to have some even better guests coming up here soon. My dude, Michael, is one of the busiest guys I know. He's been busting his ass, oh, working hard, so on the directing, producing, and acting side, but on the podcast side, and helping me. You know, this guy... He puts other people above himself so often. He's a very humble guy, but he's one of the best guys I know. Michael, thank you so much for being here. Everybody else, like I said, you never know when you're going to lose someone you love. So if today, call your mom, call your dad, call your grandma, call your grandpa. Just let them know I love you. And it's sometimes it just needs to be said because you don't know when you're not going to be able to again. So um, thank you guys so much for coming and watching with us. Uh, keep talking horror. Stay what you are. And we'll see you guys soon. Bye, everybody.